camera, though. I'll be honest. Both you look, look marvelous. Both of you look thinner. <laughs> I, I look over here and I'm like, God, they put weight on. Then I look at the camera and you're like thin. So it's, it's nuts. <laughs> that, that voice is coming from the fat guy over there off camera. That's right. <laughs> well, you may have seen a roll or two of me in, but yeah. <laughs> so before we talk specifically about the uh, the hike to Machu Picchu, just, just a couple uh, first impressions. Going to come out swinging with some big questions here. Um, the thing that made you laugh hardest on the trip? I, know, I feel like there was something. There was a story. A lot of times, you know, we'd sit around the, the dinner. I, I will tell you, I, I it was probably inappropriate jokes that we did, but one night we were sitting around the table and all that stuff, and, and I was joking about to William about his relationships with different hikers over the years and stuff. You know, they, they, you know, he would tell us unbelievable stories. It was great. Now, he was your guy. Yeah, our guy. And by the way, I think one of the questions, if you haven't asked, you will. And that's everybody has to have a guy. Yeah, that it was on very, my list. So there's two, there's three checkpoints that I remember going to. Right off the bat on the on the thing, we have to go and show them our passport and do all that. Then we hike up, we sleep. The second day, right before we go up this mountain, 4,000 feet straight up, which was by far the toughest day and in one in which I was far in the back. But it absolutely was the greatest feeling once we got to the top. We had to check in right before we go. And they basically, they time you to make sure they know. Because as Gary said, there's 500 people on the trail. So it's their way, I think, of checking it. And then the last time we checked in was the morning of the last day, at like 2 or 3.30, 2.30 or 3 in the morning, right before we go to the gates. Well, that's interesting. I had no idea that you were getting up in the, basically the middle of the night. Too. Well, every day we got up, we got up around 6 in the morning. We go to bed about 8 at night and get up at 6 in the morning. And one of the things that Gary and I were just talking about is that they give us is coca tea. Now, when we flew into Peru, we flew in and we were exhausted. It was overnight. We got to our hotel and they offered us this coca tea. Do you want some hot tea? They're like, it'll make you feel really good. So we, Isn't that what they make cocaine out of? It is. It's 5% yes. cocaine. We believe life. all of us yes. would have failed drug tests coming back because of this. <laughs> Gary, was it Gary or was it was you or Matt that bought a bag of it? I bought a bag of it. Yeah, and then you found it, out. And you put it in your lid. But then you found out you couldn't bring it back. So we gave it you to somebody. It, back, yeah. it was a bag. There were leaves. They were just leaves. There were coca leaves. So you're thinking, oh, just, you know, it's like tobacco. Oh, well, you know, but it was, it really like cleared you up and made you, they, they do it. They said, don't drink it at night because it would wire you up. So every morning, they would knock on our tents when they would wake us up. And they'd give us this hot water in a little bucket to wash our face, brush our teeth. Because later on, we saw them washing their feet. <laughs> um, which is not a really good thing. There, there is, that was, that was okay. one. You're serious? You're not getting oh, serious. Oh, oh, <laughs> serious. Getting serious. Yeah. So, Wait, that's uh, after you used it to brush your teeth? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, 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 I mean, it was... Yeah. As most of your listeners understand, <laughs> you guys are outdoors. Yeah. You, you're, you're talking about two really white cops germaphobes that <laughs> yeah. were on this hike watching our tour guide the first day peek dead into a creek in which some people take to use filtered water <laughs> i mean he's literally just peeing right into the creek which uh, we didn't need to see and then two they give us those buckets of warm water and then watching them that night fill it up and wash their feet into it and then that next morning knowing that those were what we brushed our teeth in was not a good feeling. But then the warm coca tea was great. Every morning you'd wake up, you'd take that. It would definitely fire you up. There was no coffee. So it was the hot coca tea that got us going. So it was a good feeling. But, we had it at the hotel. And, and I tell you what made me laugh the hardest, and you left this out, but but it, it's kind of a theme of the trail was um, the first day you hike from the start of the Inca Trail, you, you go over this little walk bridge, and then you're hiking to lunch. And it's about... I think 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon by the time you get lunch. It's a little bit later. And because um, you've been going since 5 in the morning. 5 in the morning from when they picked us up and drove us. Right. We didn't really start hiking until about 10. Right. And it's about an 8 mile, a little over an 8 mile hike the first day. So right. at, four, at the 4 mile mark, you can go and get lunch. And you get lunch and, and they set it up and it's very nice. And I remember one of the things that, that sticks out in my memory is we're sitting there eating. And, and, and it's a very gourmet meal. They, they make you handmade guacamole. Um, there's some chicken and rice that they have, some, some some nice vegetables. Scott eats none of it. But I remember we we get in the tent. <laughs> I got that's yeah. on my list to ask you about, by the way. <laughs> but he eats none of it. And, and and what was interesting was we're sitting in the tent and I remember just, God, this is great. And and Scott walks in with just this like white, pale face and just the look of horror on his face. And and, and I remember saying to Matt, Well, what the hell's wrong with Scott? And then Scott goes, do not go to the bathroom down there. And I said, what, what, is, the, what is that? He goes, it looks like a murder happened. In it the was bathroom. unbelievable. I, yeah. and, and, and by the way, the best part was 
So you have this unpaid toilet where you, you don't have to pay to get in. It was, a free, out, it was a free out. Right. Run by the government. That's where... Like you'd have in the AT. That's, yeah. 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 That's where it looks like a Colombian-style massacre I mean, happened. there is... I don't know if I can swear on this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There, well, there's yeah. feces everywhere. Like a monkey had gone yes. and taken piles of feces <laughs> and thrown it, it and spread it on the wall. It looked to like the point where you walk in, and I'm like, just, so I'm like I, and I'll be, I'll be frank on this. Yeah. I did not go number two. The entire <laughs> yeah. I know that may be too much information for well, your listeners, but I didn't really eat anything except garlic bread, so that helped. And what was, what, what was interesting about that first day is I remember eating this gourmet meal and knowing that the impending doom was going to need to happen. And Scott telling me that there was a murder happening. It was so place. bad. <laughs> I, so I remember. I bad I remember well, I remember getting up. It was and, just on the roof, on the walls. Like I yeah. walked in, and I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm just like, do I just pee? And I, get me out of here. And there was another place you could pay. Right. It was. It was like a setup. And right? that was that. Like, let's just destroy this. We'll just throw <laughs> shit everywhere. The thing was, and the appetizer was guacamole. So I ate the guacamole, and then I knew when he said this has happened. I said, "There's about 300 other people eating lunch, and." This place is only going to get worse. So let me get up and create that impending doom right now. So I get up and I go and I find this pay toilet. It's like 10 solace or something. It was like $1 a minute. Yeah, oh, no, maybe 30 cents a minute. Yeah, and a woman hands you three strips of toilet paper. Like three I don't squares. know anybody who can do the, like their three number squares. two with three squares of toilet I mean, paper. Seriously, yeah. that's it. And that's like, it. peels it off. And what's funny it. is I remember talking to Matt. And and Matt goes. I said, I'm going now. Matt just is to get it out of the way. Yeah, those, yeah. Are the, those are the four. So Matt says, I'm I'm gonna wait until we have our thing, and then I'll go. So I go to the pay toilet, put it in, and, and get the lady the money, and, and and I get everything done. Come back, we get done with the meal, and I remember Matt gets up and he goes, time to go read the paper or something. Then he he takes his stroll. He comes back with the same white face that Scott had. <laughs> and I said, what the, I said, what the hell happened? Oh, no, he didn't pay? Well, no. and, and, and he goes, the woman took her lunch like an hour ago and nobody can find her. So it's locked up. So the only option was the murder toy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. they had locked up the one yeah. paid. She'd taken a break. And by the way, oh. when I say toilet, the pay had a toilet. How clean was the pay? It was pretty clean. I, I would say it was like a restroom in the U.S., which is... Yeah, you yeah, know, okay. like a gas station. Do, doable, kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. The 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 most of the free toilets are not even toilets, they're just a hole in the ground kind of thing. Yeah. So what we found out, William told us on the second day there was the last uh, pay toilet, and that's what you want to use. Yeah. Because when we got to like day three and, and uh, just the toilet situation. There is was, a picture, and unfortunately your listeners can look, but that is a clean bathroom. Yeah, oh, so. but there is, you're not, I mean, that's me standing over it. And you pee in that hole. For the people dropping a deuce here, yeah, that, that is the hole. So, <laughs> by the way, that's me. That should be the, the cover photo. Yeah, they don't allow you to flush any toilet. So you wipe your ass and throw in the garbage can. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you're basically <laughs> peeing next to a garbage can full of feces for and all that matter. Even, what's even worse is no 99% no of the people. And guys and girls, you just crouch over yeah. this thing and drop a couple logs. And then I don't know how you get them in the hole. Is there a flush system there? No, no, there's no, no, flush. no flush. There's system. no water. And you would wipe with the three toilets. Yeah, you were not, <laughs> I had already packed my own toilet. Three toilets. squares. You would throw it in the garbage <laughs> can. You would throw it in the garbage can. Oh, this wow. is a clean one. Now take this picture, which yeah. obviously your I'll try I'll to describe to your listeners, <laughs> and just cover the picture. Just explode diarrhea all yeah. over it. And that is what we're. What, that's by what the way, we're talking even about. if you, even <laughs> there was. Crap on ceilings and on walls and stuff. I don't know how you do that, but I can. I I was so excited the first day that I went with one of these things in the ground. I hit a bullseye, <laughs> and it was like one of two times that I went. Each time I hit a bullseye. But all I was thinking is, there's no way in the world coming from a Western toilet to one of these that people are hitting bullseyes. I'm showing them a picture, and this is a picture of our first night, the first night site. Oh, that is the best bathroom. bathroom. So oh, it quick. was horrible. So this was I, I was the prettiest sight, but that is the bathroom. Yeah. So okay. you would have to wear a headlamp, walk up a hill. <laughs> and by the way, to to kill any smell, they overloaded every <laughs> sense yeah. ever. I mean they just threw it up in potpourri. Like yeah. you walked in there and died from toxins <laughs> where they tried to make it smell better, but it was brutal. <laughs> it was horrible. Yeah, but it was we a, need to put that picture on the website. Yeah, it was a beautiful oh, website. Wow, that's, beautiful. Like, that's what we woke up to in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'd definitely get these pictures to you, but it was it was an amazing um, 
experience. But like Gary was talking about the first day, and the first day was the I think the way they said it was the first day was the easiest of the hike, the second day was the hardest, the third day was the second hardest, and then the fourth day. So if you had to rate the days, the fourth day was the shortest. Um, but it was the hardest because it was no, the no, steepest. No, no, the okay. second day was the, the, the steepest, the hardest. Yeah. It was a long, the third day was the longest hike. So it wasn't as hard as it was long. The second day was longer than the first and literally 4,000 feet straight up. Matt, how many, how many miles are we talking? You're doing 4,000 feet over how far? We did, well, 27 miles over yeah. four days with yeah. the last day being about three miles. So you average about eight miles a day for the first three days. Okay. Um, and I think it was, and so it was like eight, more like eight, 10, and six. Right, sorry, eight, six, and ten, because it was only six miles the day that we went four thousand feet straight up. But that's a pretty good beat. Well, and I got to tell you, part of my training was doing two hundred flights of stairs a day, and stairs. that's what I would say is the best to do. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't have any problem going up. Um, going up, I was fine. I mean, he said I was like, you know, yeah, he was a rocket going, going up, and I was a rocket going down. I yeah. just chucked and rolled. I'm like yeah. you, yeah. Going down, I had a problem because of my knee situation, but it, it, it was kind of tough going down for me. And, and the third day was rather tough because it was long. And the problem on the third day is you have no level footing whatsoever. You're on cobblestones or you're on dirt trails where you're kind of rolling ankles. And, and you're on ledges. And if you're yes. afraid of heights, yes. you're looking down. Now, I'm not afraid of heights, but there was nothing. Like our tour guide said, it. make sure if you have any locals walk by you, you go to the mountainside. Yes. Don't go to the edge side. We don't need any accidents. I'm I was talking to what so Matt and Virginia went with Gary and I. I was walking with Matt and I'm talking to him and he goes, Look out, and I almost walked off the ledge. Mm-hmm. And I, unfortunately, in all my pictures, I could not find a picture that would do justice the drop. Now, now what kind of drop? Like how what sort of feet? I mean, you're was? talking I mean it, it was six thousand. Yeah, significant feet at different times. But because of jungle buildup, like you fall, you would be falling through Sticker bushes, stuff, yeah, stuff, yeah. stuff that had grown on the side of the mountain, right. but there was nothing to hold you, right? Yeah, you would just yeah. be, you know, it was a drop down. So the picture really couldn't show um, Again, what we felt. If so, we had a drone. Yeah, you could get it. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the 4,000 feet, are you going up most of the time with it these is, little drops? It's or? straight up. So when you're talking about coming down, it's after you climb Machu Picchu. No. So okay. you get to Machu Picchu in a valley. So, so the first uh, day you so, hike, you hike to a, a little town, and, and it's kind of nice. Um, you know, again, throughout the trail, there's no running water. There's no kind of services or anything. But, but you people, are going through small towns. But people do live here. Yeah. Okay, yeah right. And when I'm talking small towns, I'm talking 40 or 50 people live in these places. And they serve the hikers that come on this community. So, so are they, they the ones doctors. actually cooking for you? Or do the guys cook? No, the guy, we have porters. Okay. So we had, I think, nine porters, uh, nine staff or four of us. Or six of us, six of us. So it's not like the townspeople are feeding you and making money off of it. The guys no. are the ones that are doing it. No, that. but they okay. they have Snickers bars and things of that sort. And there's some churches. This gives you. Way. I'm uh, showing him basically the mountain. Height. Yeah. So we yeah. started here. So it's a pretty flat, and then literally the second day is straight up, and then you go down into this valley and camp, and then the third day is all the way down to here. So, so we'll we'll, we'll put these on Facebook for the listeners. It, it's like a bell curve, though. It's essentially a. Uh, you peak out, and then you kind of come down. Yeah. But you're only coming down that. But it, it is literally a straight up 4,000 feet elevation difference. Yeah. And again, my suggestion is if anybody's ever going to do this hike, if you do 200 flights of stairs on the Stairmaster, and I did it for, the, I think, the month before the trip, I was already a runner. So I was n- used to running like three to five miles, no problem. But I wasn't used to kind of going up. And, and that Stairmaster, I think... Because I was the only one of the group that did the Stairmaster, and I was so far out from in front of everyone. Well, Matt did it too. Matt, Matt who went on and had never really hiked anything right. other than maybe a local hiking trail. He had never been a hiker. He's he did great. He was the youngest guy on the trip, but he asked me what he should do, and he went to, he went to his gym every day, and he got up to about 120 flights a day on the Stairmaster. Mm-hmm. I said that because of the unevenness. The toughest thing, really, and Gary said it, is because they're all handmade stairs. Mm-hmm. And so I think if you, I think all of our stairs and all of our houses are eight inch steps. And I think, wasn't it you Gary that told me about that study they did? Yeah, it's, it's, when you, when you climb steps, you get muscle memory. And, and what this one study did was they, they did one step that was nine inches. 
and and everybody tripped. <laughs> everybody tripped. And so so just one, yeah, nobody could nobody could make it up the stairs without tripping. And to your and point, handmade, awesome. handmade is they're all different yeah, levels. Yeah, I mean, there was three different stones. times yeah. I almost ate it. Gary wanted to take a picture one time. We were going down the steep scary. area. I went to turn. My second time laughing. <laughs> if I did not have poles, <laughs> yeah. I would not be here sitting. Here. I mean, that off. you would have heard. You could hear everybody uh, like gasp <laughs> that I was done. Virginia, I reached back and my pole. Day. I told it all. Virginia, Virginia screamed at me then. And and there was another time where we were. Um, I was looking over the edge of something. And I remember Scott and Virginia got nervous because it looked like the dirt on the edge of it was going to give out because I was so close to the edge. And I'm kind of leaning over and they started screaming at me. And I turned around to see them and I got dizzy because I'm scared. I'm afraid of heights. And so they, I almost got fell off there. Too. So you guys have views most of the time you're hiking. I mean, it sounds like you're not in the canopy. I mean, you have views. No, you have views the entire time. It, it is gorgeous. You, yeah. I mean, the, the third uh, really, the only time we really didn't, uh, we had to use the fourth day. The third day, there was maybe a period where you're just going through, like, woods. Yeah. But, but not much. It's, Most yeah, of it's, it's, I would say 98% of the time you have, it's pr the prettiest country I've ever been to. Now, um, we, we rented everything. I know you talk about what we got and the porters and what they're carrying. The, the first day we slept on grass. It was the most comfortable, best night's sleep. The next two days we slept on rock, which was a killer. We had inflatable mattresses and that was fine from a sleeping bowl when you had to get up to pee and knowing you for a shooter, <laughs> like 10 minutes. Like yeah, getting out of the tent, it is all rock. So if you don't stand up immediately and you put your knee down, it's gravel. So yeah. it was all rock and gravel. So it, it, I mean, it hurt a little bit if you get straight up, just going out to pee, and then if you're barefoot, you're hurting walking on rocks. So, so let's talk about the campsites a little bit. So you're not actually camping in the towns. No, no, they're like no. designated campsites. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. watched them kill a chicken the first day. So it really got interesting. So when Gary talked about all the food, you know, as we're eating and everybody's having it, and they're bringing this. Really, I mean, I even tried some of the some of the meat one time. It was good. Um, we oh, we ate alpaca. So I, I'm all yeah. over the place here, but when we got to Peru, we went out for a couple of dinners, and that was by far the most adventurous out of all of us eating. And yeah. he really wanted to eat guinea pig, which is the delicacy of Peru. Mm -hmm. So you could get guinea pig in most restaurants. Thankfully, you could also get pizza. So it was a win-win for all of us. Um, yeah, I but, can't believe you found pizza. That yeah. Easily. So, but I ate alpaca the first night. We tried it. We I had, have video of it. Yeah, I have video. He says it's gamey. Yeah, it was a little chewy, but but. Um, um, we did that, but now, now uh, going back to the campsite, they would make some. They would make decent food, I guess, for those that ate no, it. Decent. It was incredible food that they. We made. consider they set up a kitchen on spot. But then one of the guys that we were with, um, that we had just met on the tour, asked, "Where, where? You know, I don't see you in coolers. Like, what do you, where are you storing the meat? I saw you kill the chicken the first morning. They killed the chicken, so we knew the chicken was fresh, right? Uh, but we didn't know where you stored the meat. And they're like, oh, what we do is we, we have meat in the bags, and we keep meat in bags in the river, and it's all snow melt, so the water's cold, yeah. it keeps the meat cold. So they would just have these places where they would just drop in meat in the river, and they would cook it. Nobody got nobody got sick at yeah. all from the food, which, I, I mean, I had garlic bread. The last night is a special treat. They made me a pizza. And <laughs> on the trail? Yeah. On the trail. Yeah. How they trail. make it? I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't, they, well, they had cheese and they had bread. The garlic bread. They made me garlic bread every night. So it was like garlic bread and they put mozzarella and, and sauce they, on there. They, yeah, they, I think they chopped up the tomatoes and actually made you sauce. Because, well, wasn't that the one? They put tomatoes on it. He's like, no, 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 no. I don't like tomatoes. Yeah, I, I just like the sauce. Well, that was at the restaurant. <laughs> the restaurant we had at the restaurant. So yeah, I, no, it was. It was the, so are they cooking over an open fire or do they have like little stoves that they. Uh, uh, they have propane. Mm -hmm. so, so these guys. And I had video of me trying to carry one of the packs. The porters carry anywhere between 60 and 80 pound packs. Wow. Um, I've got a picture of it here. Yeah, they're carrying our tents. And you said you have nine. You had nine porters for your group. Now, how many were in your group? There were four Six. with you specifically, and then you had two others. We had two others from Texas. They were Texas. And, and like the um, people you met on the trail, nationality. There's us eating food in the tent. We can give you all these pictures, and you can post them to your Facebook page. But this is us eating in the tent. So that's Virginia. That's William our tour guide. That's Matt, Gary. Um, that's a big Jeff, tent, much bigger than and, uh, Oh, they have good. I mean, they set up an eating tent for you. Yeah. Here it is on the outside. Wow, and they, cooked, they cooked on that side. This is they would port this, so we, they would run ahead of us, sprint ahead of us, and I got pictures of that where they would sprint ahead of us, set up this giant tent where they would then start the meal. Yeah. We'd get there, we you know we'd sit at the table. Here's a picture of Gary putting on the pack that they wear. Oh my god, so that Gary, look how big it is. Look at buddy, look at him. Yeah. Look at the size, how small that guy is, it's sixty to eighty pounds. And so Gary's explaining how, how heavy that is. And then when you're going up some of the hills and stuff. I love your hat, by the way. Your yeah, heavy long stack. Yeah. 
Oh my yeah, god. He bought that in Peru. Yeah, yeah f- that in Peru. for the listeners that can't see the pictures, uh, essentially, um, if you take two F 150 pickup trucks and put them in the end, <laughs> that's about the size of this mess hall that they're setting up. And the pack that Gary had on his back that must have been 90 I mean, pounds looked like it. I think your audience would know 60, about 60 to 80 pounds. And you're, I mean, we had nine. That's why they would carry our personal stuff. We we all had packs packs that we were allowed to keep fifteen pounds in, up to fifteen pounds. Yeah, well, which we went over. Okay. By the way, the, the biggest tip I can give your folks, is, and it was a tip given by our guys, is um, put whatever you can fit in your pack the first day, put it in there. By the second day, whatever you can put in your duffel bag for the porters to carry. Put that in there mm-hmm. and make your pack as light as possible. Those guys are used to carrying that stuff. Obviously, if you put a couple extra pounds in there, they're not going to notice the difference. But if you got an extra couple of pounds because you haven't done this trail before, yeah, whoa. And, yeah. and like Scott said, that second day going up, it's tough. Now, what what are you paying for the for the guide services? I so, mean, that, I know that's. They, a, I mean, Gary did all the negotiation on that. We we, we had an awesome tour guide. Yeah. And, and going back, they would give that. We went to a meeting when we landed where they would all hand everybody a duffel bag, and you could have up to fifteen pounds. To Gary's point, all the hotels would weigh us, so they had weighed, so they would weigh the fifteen pounds. And but then my tour guide lifted up my my backpack. He said, "Way too heavy. Throw some more stuff in your duffel bag." And I, and that's what Gary said. <laughs> He's helping you out. Yeah, he said, "Dude, just throw some of there because once you're on the trail, nobody's weighing that bag." Yet. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that way, I like Gary said, the first day, which was the easiest hike day, I had probably forty pounds on me. Mm, that's a legitimate. When you, when you count, we had a hundred milliliter or hundred milliliter um, Camelback. Filled. You know, yeah. I had water bottles on both sides. We had food, had a raincoat, and stuff like that. Once you figure out the weather and stuff, I put my you know other stuff in the uh, duffel bag that night and got down to about twenty five pounds. So so let's talk about water. You guys, uh, you're just using a filter in the streams. Like how you get your. We water? got there. We went. The first thing we did was we went to a grocery store and we I bought these giant liters of water and we used that to fill us up. And the guy said the first day on the hike. You don't want to use the streams. We all had filters, right? Because filter. they're further down. Yeah. They're further down, so it's they're not as good. And after seeing the guy peeing in the creek, I, I understand. <laughs> and so, you got all the right. chicken in there. That's yeah. uh, and then they would boil cool. water for us every morning. So every morning they, they would fill us up. Uh, okay. So I didn't. I didn't have a Camelback. I just did it with a couple of bottles, plastic mm-hmm. bottles that I bought. They would give us two liters, mm-hmm. and I definitely drank the least amount of water out of the group. Um, you were the, also the only one who did not take. Altitude sickness right. medicine. So three of us took that. Well, that, that was a question on my list because the elevation of Machu Picchu is uh, around 70,000. So we get close, close to 14,000 feet. So because the hike up, we're at 13,981. So oh, very before close you to come down. Yeah, on the second day before you come down. So there was a lady who was I an got unbelievable it. athlete that I that I hiked with on the mm-hmm. thing. She said she had diarrhea for four days. She's never had altitude sickness like this in her life. And she's from Canada and was in, in great shape. She did not take the medicine. I, I had taken the medicine before on a 14er, and it's it's worked for me. The only negative, and we were joking about this earlier, is I had Matt, who had never hiked, take it. We have to take it two days before we go. What it does to you is it makes soda taste so bad. <laughs> so Matt, Matt's, That's, I need that. Matt's thing. telling this story where he goes to a restaurant in Philly, and he drinks a Coke, and he's like, oh. Something's wrong with your tap. Returns it, goes to a Wawa, which is a local convenience store in the Northeast for some of your listeners, and buys a 20-ounce Coke and then realizes it's got to be the pills because he tastes it again. It tastes like ass. And he's like, oh, this is horrible. And that is the side effect, which is good because I drink I, – I have caffeine headaches. So along the the hike, there wasn't coffee in the morning. I've never had coffee. I always have one soda a day, Mountain Dew and Dr. Pepper. So I was really worried about that because the last thing I wanted was just major headaches as you're trying to enjoy it. Um, a gentleman you're very familiar with, Steve Scornia, had told me about these crystal light caffeine packets. Yeah. And I would just pour, I would carry an empty bottle of water in this neighborhood. So I went 